Hi guys, my name is Angelica. I'm a PhD student at UFMG, and today we we'll present to you the paper when binary optimization meets static profiling. This work is part of my PhD journey and that is devised by Guilherme Ottoni from Facebook and Fernando Pereira from UFMG. The main goal of this project is to optimize binaries, taking advantage of static profilers inferred by a machine learning model. We were inspired by Calder's work in 1997, which used a classification model to statically predict brain tissue direction in programs. However, we approached the problem from a different angle, modeling it as a regression task instead. There is the reason we decided to call this modification as VSPA, short for Vintage ESP Amended. This is Calder's approach is called ESP. First, I'll go over a few uh, concepts which are important in this context. Thus, what is soft-based branch prediction? Well, it is a technique that predicts the behavior of branches based solely on programs called analysis. This analysis could be done dynamically, involving execution of program, or statically by only looking at the source code. In this presentation, we'll be dealing with a static branch prediction technique. Another important thing to keep in mind is the difference between branch prediction, probability, and frequency. A branch prediction is a yes and no answer for the direction of the branch. For instance, looking at the snippet of code, the branch prediction algorithm might say branch V1 to V2 will be taken. A branch probability is an estimate of how likely a branch is to be taken. And in this case, an estimate might uh, predict that branch V1 to V2 has a 81% probability of being taken, while V1 to V3 has 19%. Finally, a branch frequency measures how often a given branch is taken. And in this example, let's say that basic block V1 is a kid's 80 times, in 65 of which uh, it's branch V2, and the other 15 times it's branch V3. But why use static over dynamic profiles? Well, there are scenarios in which the acquisition of profile information uh, representative inputs is difficult, uh, maybe because of hardware or OS restriction, for instance. Uh, plus, sometimes it can be impossible to gather this information, for instance, in end user mobile apps where we need to. Uh, make the user to agree to allow us to collect the data. Uh, in this work, we implement a static profiling inference technique on top of both binary optimizer. Both typically usage look something like this, uh, where we run the target program with a profiler, enable it, then optimize the binary based on the counters collected by the profiler. Our technique, on the other hand, analyze the program's code statically, extract a few code features from it, feed it into a trained predictor, then optimize the program based on those predictors, predictions uh, without having to run the program. Alternatively, to run the program, our technique follows the steps when pre-processing the input program. After the program is assembled, we extract 56 features for each of its branches. We perform some pre-processing uh, to curate these features and compute some additional meta features. But keep in mind that we reduce the dimensionality of the feature space by implementing a grid search and selecting the 20 best features. We then use the program to either train a deep neural network during the training phase or have the neural network to perform predictions for its brain to optimize it. Uh, I know 56 features is a lot of features to go over, but they typically look like this. Um, there are features which are highly significant, such as this loop header feature, which determines uh, whether the branch uh, is header of a loop in the program. Uh, that would be true for this branch, but false for this one. 
uh, there are uh, 55 more features to go over. Finally, when optimizing program, our model output predictions for each of its branches. But how exactly do this uh, look like? Wow. Well, earlier, the model outputs an estimate for the probability of each branch to be taken. However, both performs its optimization decision based on branch frequency as determined by its execution counters. We need a way to go from the output probability to meaningful frequencies. And to this end, we use the technique proposed by Blue Arrows. The algorithm works by first computing the frequency for each of the basic block and add it in a function interpretability based on the branch probabilities. However, this algorithm provides only an estimate of the frequency for each block. Therefore, we perform a validation step before assigning a function frequencies. Uh, to this end, we calculate the entry and exit flows for a function. If the flows don't match within an error measure of 20%, we disregard the computed uh, frequency for that function marking it as stale. Um, if it matches, we scale the uh, values by a constant to have the absolute counters. Now on to our experimental evaluation. Uh, ours, in our setup environment, uh, we trained our model with a database with 233 programs, uh, 11 from SPEC CPU 2006, and 222 from LLVM test suite. All binaries were compiled using uh, Clang 12 with minus 03. And 80% of the collected branches uh, were used for training and 24 tests and validation tests. Uh, in this paper, we explore um, the following research question. What are the performance gains of our approach when compared to the baseline compiler at its highest optimization level and to a binary optimized with dynamic profile information? Our comparison baseline is the original binary optimized by a compiler, Clank RTCP, and its highest optimization level. We also compare against several other candidates binary. The first of them is a binary built using Bolt with its typical dynamic profile. We generate a binary using Bolt with a static profile built using the risk do it to Valeros. Both plus unbased is a binary built using both with a profiler that simply predicts 50 50% for every branch. Both plus no profile is a, profile, a binary, uh, is our new hypothesis, which is a binary built uh, both with no profile information at all. And finally, we have uh, the two final comparison points, which are binary. Uh, built using trivial profiler, which predicts a 100% probability in either direction. Both plus Visp indicate the binary built using our technique. Here we have the runtime results for the binary for Clank 7 compiler. The original binary was built using uh, Clank 12 uh, at minus 03. The input here is the source code for Clank itself. So the compiler is bootstrapping from its own source code. We clearly see that while using both uh, with fully dynamic profile, vastly outperforms VISPA. Uh, uh, VISPA still provides significant gains over static uh, techniques. Uh, here we show results for optimized binary of MySQL. The original baseline binary was built using TTP minus 03, and the input is the OLTP point select uh, test of SysBench benchmark suite. The behavior occurs uh, where both using the full dynamic profile is far better than the other binaries. Um, but with VISPA, it still provides relevant speed ups over the other stack alternatives. 
The experiments discussed in this presentation show that although our static profile is still far away from dynamic profiler, it does deliver considerable speed up on top of optimized code with minus O3. We have tested our work analyzing other binaries and other ML implementations. It is our intention to describe it to result in an extended version of this work. If you have any questions or comments, you can contact me in the email below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for an extended version of this presentation. Bye-bye.